another state I'm trying to eat down a whole nother plate Seem like my homies were stuck in the hood I just told them be safe in the state Welcome to the Black Miss Podcast. Welcome to the Black Miss Podcast. I am your host, Two Black. A uh, quick announcement before this episode starts. Just want to let everybody know that uh, this is a two-parter. Uh, we're doing a Black Miss in Review 2022, so we're going to review our Miss. But then the other half of this, the extended conversation, will be on our Patreon. Um, it won't be available elsewhere, but it'll be on our Patreon. So if anyone wants to hear us talk beyond this, if you are a loyal person and to the show who wants to hear us talk more than an hour, half the time I don't, but if you want to listen to us talk more than an hour um, about this and we're going to go more in depth on some of our myths, then, um, you know, feel, feel free to, um, you know, subscribe to the Patreon or if you're already a, a Patreon or a patron, then go ahead and, and listen on. But uh, otherwise, uh, we're going to get to the episode. So uh, thanks. Thanks. Thanks for listening. Welcome to the Black Miss Podcast. Welcome to the Black Miss Podcast. I am your host, Too Black. This wow. is our favorite episode of the year. It is our end of the year wrap up. This has been a long ass fucking year. Yes, it has. How's the year going for y'all? Is it also you know, just as ghetto for y'all as it is for me? Almost over. It's like yes. a year for me. I, mean, yes. I, can't, I can't complain. You're right. I am lying. First yeah. half was trying to get me but i came back in the second half of this year you know and just watch cam's um ig stories you know you can don't get do that actually black I... soccer mom updates but <laughs> <laughs> just me posting my ring three times a day yeah, it, absolutely ridiculous starbucks uh, flash it one more time just 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 for the audience flash one. They, they, for those who don't know she's, fiance. she's engaged <laughs> um and it's hey. not about anybody who has any rumors so hey. <laughs> I mean, she's, She's engaged to be very congratulated. Show that ring, Cam. No, so, one be, more time. I talk with my hands enough. It'll be seen a, a right. million times this episode, and that is All not right. the point. Two of two of our comrades in the show are now either engaged or married. Um, shout out to Terrell, who got married last year. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I was just randomly talking about that the other day. But anyway, the uh, highlight of nothing bad. Just, just for randomly. sure. <laughs> um but yeah like can said this is our end of the year episode um before we get into like any particulars but before we review because this is a review before we review anything is there anything on anyone's mind in regards to the year of the podcast not life in general but you know or just the shit that even has been happening in the world that inspired some of our episodes etc fuck jeff bezos <laughs> get out of my head on the my phone on gray. Fuck Jeff Bezos. That was exactly what I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Yo, and thing. shout out to uh, what's my what's my boy's name who uh, led the Amazon boycott? Chris Malls. Oh, Chris yeah. Malls. Shout this out to Chris cool. Malls. You know, <laughs> yeah, taking that, my whole flow. Yeah, that, <laughs> that that happened this year. The first the first union, first organized union. Amazon. Amazon is still not giving them a contract though. At all. And, and, and Cam supports Union Busting Starbucks. I just want to put that out there. I have uh, not been to Starbucks <laughs> in weeks. Since we discussed it, I have not been. Yeah. I think when it comes to the pod, though, um, mm-hmm. and just the year as a whole, I think the best and the worst thing is the fact that there's never not enough things for us to talk about. And I think even sometimes, like, you know, listeners don't always, well, they don't see our planning sessions when we're trying to think through and try to mm-hmm. figure out what we want to talk about and what's important to speak on. Um, but the world has been shitty forever and there's a ton of misinformation that is continuously, um, spewed into the world. I mean, all of us are on Twitter and we see the bullshit on a daily basis. And so it makes our jobs quite easy when it, um, just from the standpoint that like the premise of our show isn't to be like, y'all niggas are dumb. It is to be, it is to really address the fact that it is intentional, (laughs) the misinformation that is continuously spewed and if we do not as um as a community really break it down and like learn the truth from it like we're not going to be able to adequately continue to fight for our liberation Uh, and so I think like when it comes to the pod I'm just continuously proud of the way that like we push and expand our own mindsets and we're learning in the process and we don't always get it right but like we stand 10 toes down in the fact that like this is important to us and like we're going to continue it for the good, the bad, and the ugly. Definitely, so, yeah. definitely, 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 yeah. 
I think um, you know, every year is different. This is Mar as March of next year will make this three years. Uh, you know, it's different now versus when COVID was first hit. You know, there was more time to study, so you gotta, you know, gotta build discipline. I know for me, especially just last year, just to find the time to study and still keep up on like what to even talk about and make sure it's quality because I don't want to give bullshit. You know, if we had a point where we ain't got the time, we just got to do bullshit myths and it's time to stop. <laughs> like, yeah, that's a rule. Like, ain't no reason to be out here talking about, you know, the most easy, like low hanging fruit just because we ain't got time at that point. We probably should, should do the show. You know, um, yeah. a lot of people do that. You know, no no names to be need to be named, but you know, I don't I don't want to do that. I think yeah, that. we want to maintain a sense of integrity for the show. Yeah. yeah. And like Cam said, I mean, unfortunately, there's no there's no um loss of any type of bullshit out there in the world. So we're always <laughs> going to have myths that we're gonna to have to address, whether they be old or new. We'll be here. We'll be here to break them down, you know, show your analysis and Shattered those myths. I and think some of it is like us learning in the process, right? Of like, course. I mean, we're going to touch on some of them later in the episode, but mm -hmm. it's not like we are sitting here saying that we are experts in anything. I mean, there are some topics that, you know, each of us have a really large depth of knowledge on, but for the most part, we wanted to do this and we say this all the time because this is shit mm -hmm. that we were discussing and going back and forth over and learning together on the mm -hmm. phone and text messages and stuff and so like I think it is like our growth in what we address and how we address it mm -hmm. is a testament to like our dedication to learning continuously yeah and I think we do one shit I think we do a good job of of like actually pursuing real information because the, the 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 biggest I don't want to say the challenge but the easiest pitfall would be to just follow the headlines mm -hmm. yeah, like so when Kanye says something now we're gonna talk about anti-semitism you know or when you know I don't know when Brittany Griner and this is no knock on her gets home now we're gonna talk about Russia or you know whatever you know is in the head and and because of the world we live in there's always something trending there's always some topic that can be taken up you know, then all of a sudden we want to do, because I mean, I, even today is when Brittany Griner got out and everybody all of a sudden has an opinion on Russia. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Um, Arms dealers. <laughs> no, I agree, with you, I agree with you on that. I do enjoy the fact that we, like we touch on subject that, subjects that nobody talks about or mm -hmm. some are afraid to talk about. And we heavily research them. And that's why I, that's where I learned the most, just because I get all these different, we get all these different articles, videos and stuff that we watch, and it's like eye-opening, because we're learning right along with you guys, and then it's more of a, we're not just regurgitating these think pieces that we see on Twitter, Instagram, and all, you know, we're actually coming with facts that we researched ourselves and read and looked through, and yeah, but as far as the year, I think we had a, I think we had a great year. Um, I'm I'm not upset. I'm 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 excited about the next year. What we what we got planned and yeah, yeah, definitely. I think um, you know yeah. this year had more time was a little more crunch, but I think we got we got through it. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so just to shout out the Patreon patrons of our Patreon, that's been going pretty well. So I want to continue that tradition of shouting out people's names. So. <laughs> Since the last episode on Haiti, so we got Comrade the AJ, I I G I J A E. I just if I messed it up, I probably did. I apologize, but we still definitely appreciate you coming through and helping out. Um, we have Joseph Cornell. I think Joseph Cornell is actually a returning person, so shout out to Joseph Cornell for coming back. Right um, on. Um, we have Tyrone Porter Jr. We have um, Pledge by Paul Duke. We have Keisha Ford, and we have Gerardo. Uh, so I want to shout those people out. One, a few of those people I might have shout out in the last episode, but so what? You can get another shout out. So thank Much you. Much love to all of y'all for real yeah. for supporting. Oh, and we just got one. I think just a few days ago from uh, the name is is just K. Shout out to K. Shout out to K. 
Shout out to K. Shout out to K. Whatever that may be. So yeah, it's been this has probably been our best month, honestly. Uh, or this last oh. like last thirty days have been pretty strong. Uh, so you know, shout out to y'all for coming through. Um, I think the uh, doing the interview and dropping the fool on our Patreon and splitting it up to two on public, I think is a good mix. Uh, plus, we're not keeping anything from anyone. Um, but yeah, so shout out to that. We want, before we get into the episodes, want to um, shout out a few accomplishments. This is more for my cast than it is for me. Uh, <laughs> but like, uh, also before we get into the comments, shout out to the audio listeners because uh, that's been growing more than the video. Uh, so I just want to shout out the audio because we really, our promotion wasn't as strong this year. That's on me. But shout out to the audio listeners for that still growing, despite, you know, that not being the, our best, like, promotional side. Um, you know, y'all y'all were here before we were doing video. So definitely want to shout y'all out for sure. Um, <clears throat> as far as some of the accomplishments we had this year. Uh, so Dr. James released... I don't think the book is actually out yet, but I was sent the manuscript. I failed to uh, follow up with some of that. But like uh, Revolutionary Love, she's releasing a book called Revolutionary Love is a series of her conversations. And what our podcast is one of those, the one on um, Angela Davis, the myth that Angela Davis is a Black Panther. She's not a Black Panther or never was a Black Panther, I should say. Um, that, that conversation, me and Ryan were on that interview. That's one of our most watched and listened to episodes. Um, and that that, that a truncated version of that conversation is included in the book. So I just want to you know shout everybody out because that we that was work we all put in, even if it was just two of us in that interview. Um, this upcoming year, we're going to be uh, speaking at DePaul University, like live. We're going to do a podcast. Uh, so we'll, we'll be recording one. I don't know if we'll do live, but uh, Chicago. We can do that in person. That comes from like when I was at the socialism conference and, you know, I ran into someone, uh, several people actually who told me they listened to the podcast. You know, I didn't know. I was just there. Uh, I wasn't there like as a presenter or anything. I was just there. But, um, you know, I think the most, the, to, for me, the most like impactful thing we did is we helped uh, spread awareness about the Pendleton too. that now has a defense committee that me and Terrell are on. Um, it's actually trying to get them out of prison. And I think this is a good example of like, if you're going to do this kind of work, we can, you can't follow up on every story or every subject, but something I think you should commit to beyond just raising awareness. Um, so we raised awareness, but now we're actually working on like the actual organizing side of getting them out. Um, and that's, and we raised a lot of, a lot of awareness and did a decent amount of organizing since that episode dropped back yeah. in, what was that March. Um, and that was the episode for those, we don't know that was a uh, violence is never the answer the myth violence is never the answer um our episode this is really not new real quick before we go into that can i give a big shout out to um psl muncie who wrote an article about the penalty too after we did that um event and uh, shout out yeah, to definitely. mario psl for real for real yeah, showing us love yeah definitely and and shout out to all the other places that have uh, picked up the stories on the penalty too and all the this this next year we'll, there'll be a lot more on that that that's being worked mm -hmm. on in the background. Yeah, and since the committee has started, um, you know, again, there's real organizing on this, so there's there's petitions that can be signed that we're gonna leave in the in the show notes. Um, and, and like I said, there'll be more work coming out. But those are things you can do wherever you're at. You can sign petitions to the governor, petitions to the prosecutor in the county that they're locked currently locked up in, uh, that you know to help get them out of prison. So. Uh, we'll have other stuff to be spread and other other things that way, other ways for people to get engaged. Um, and you can also write them. Yeah, uh, that's something we're really trying to push. Um, you can write them because more people who write them, um, that's one that's just good for them because you know they're in prison and guys yeah. that people talk to. And also, it helps protect them as more information comes out and as more people come to know about this situation. A lot of times prisoners retaliate or the, the prison guards retaliate. So mm -hmm. the more contact they have with the outside world, the better. So yeah, we'll definitely sign definitely sign the positions. Uh we'll put links at the bottom where you can sign the petitions, write them. Uh I believe we even have is it a GoFundMe or a Cash App or something? Yeah, we have a funds. we have a defense campaign or defense committee um fund, and we also have a documentary that we're that has been made, and then we have one that we're we're working on. It's the same one, but we're just we're just upgrading it a little bit. 
Uh, but yeah, I think that for me, that's what I'm most proud of. Cause you know, I mean, I'm proud of all the episodes, but that's, that's real life, real life, you know? So yeah. I'm proud to, mm -hmm. to, to have gotten caught up in that. Um, like I was also, um, next point, our episode, this is not new. Our episodes have been, uh, they're being taught at different universities. Every once in a while, some teacher tells me that, you know, our episodes are being used to teach, to teach a class. Um, now I will say, I've noticed this trend. This is not a knock with anybody, but if you're using our episode to teach a class and please, you know, put someone on Patreon, you know, because, <laughs> because it is labor that you didn't have to do. Cause you can just send, you can just give your class our episode. Uh, but so yeah, they, bring it to your university as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We would love to actually just like kind yeah. of chat and shoot the shit with folks and yeah. like continue to point, Cam. dialogue out. outside yeah. of our screens. Like if this is something that um you are finding useful to the point where like you want to be using this material in your in your classes, we would love to be an active participant in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And you know, yeah. you don't if you if you don't have a budget, even if it's just even if it is a Zoom thing. We yeah. got so we got if we can fit it in the schedule. Um, and then you know, along that point with a lot of like more grassroots organizations, you know, sometimes we get tagged um that our our episodes are being used for political education. You know, there's a there's a uh, gun club in in Tennessee that emailed me the, um I think a few months ago. They're they're using our episodes for their political education. Um so you know, shout out to you know, I just want to announce those things for the cast because I think it's important to acknowledge this, but also like you know, we don't really flex online like some people, but like we we do be trying to do something. So I just think it needs to be a public record. Like we don't just be talking to the mic. I know a lot of podcasts are bullshit and people just jacking themselves off. So, you know, I just want to recognize that. <laughs> <laughs> I just, just say, I just want to recognize like, you know, we are trying to do something. Oh, we really are trying to provide real education here and not just, you know, talk about LLCs or relationships or whatever, All right? Uh, <laughs> also, also, bro, I don't, we're in France. Shout out to France. Shout uh, out to France. Oh, like I that. forgot about that. Yeah, we had yeah, a- Yeah, bro. Put peace Invite us out. Invite us out, for real, for real. I was happy. I was hyped about that one. Like, Y'all can for real fly us out to France, like, you know. Yeah. My passport good. We straight. We might not come back. Just saying. Hey, I'm, I'm I mean, okay. I'm not gonna stay in France. No shade. All shade, actually. But um, would love to come and visit. And you know, mm -hmm. I haven't been in France. My in way years, to so. safer ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or I haven't been in France in years, so it'll be great to visit again. It's on a Zoom call, we'd love to talk to you guys. See what's going on. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. I mean, the I mean, this this shit is hard and multiple countries like oh, beyond the United, <laughs> multiple continents honestly yeah i mean we are we crack a joke or two about you know having folks bring us out but in reality like so much of how we met and as a collective and how we have continued to grow is like through the relationships that we've been able to build with people in different spaces i mean my friendship with black has <laughs> came about because we met at a conference literally and yeah. That's my that dog. was an accident, but that's oh, an accident I'm... at that, and <laughs> <laughs> and we have been to multiple conferences and learned and talked to a variety of people. And you know, I mean, so many of the people that we've been able to have as guests on the podcast have also come about from many of those same spaces of like learning and growing. Or we were fans of their work um, and wanting to talk to them and wanting to to have a com larger conversation around these things. And so, not only would it be cool to come and talk about our pod but it's always a great time when we can collaborate and like just learn from other folks so yeah definitely definitely you know and if there's I know sometimes I know somebody who texted me the other day I need to respond to them about a myth that they were thinking about us doing but if you know if you know us or if you want to contact us like I've said before you can you can try it, but don't send us no bullshit. Like I, I, cause I, you know, we have, <laughs> so, you have a myth idea. That's cool. But like, you know, and I'm, I have no problem if that feels whatever, because I don't want to, you know, I've had people send me some bullshit, but there has been some folks that have sent us and I have been used on the show stuff that yeah was constructive. And I'm like, yeah, like the Angela Davis episode, I won't say who gave it to us, but like somebody I knew about that, but I never thought about doing an episode on it. Somebody brought that to our attention. So, or even the conservation episode, which yeah, for me was like yeah. one of the most out of left field, but like massively yeah. <laughs> uh, 
perspective changing episodes of I something I, was- that I hadn't even thought about. Um, and when she reached out to us with her thoughts on it, um, mm-hmm. yeah, it, she was a at first we were just like. Like, I wish I was a part of that episode. Was a listener of the For show, real, bro. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Like, if you write something, if you're a writer, if you've got a book coming out, you know, because we we tend to value people who actually write their ideas down beyond mm-hmm. Twitter. So <laughs> we tend to appreciate that. I'm sorry, I bought one today, but like we we yeah. tend to appreciate that. <laughs> This uh, is the black we all know every single day. Tom <laughs> full collection is Alice Black, but this is like who black is a nigga. So. <laughs> He's a nigga, nigga. Like, bro, I know I take I take shots during the episode all the time, but y'all don't pay attention mm-hmm. to the shots that he takes. This man is a menace. Oh anyway. yeah, he's a sniper for real, for real. Anyway, um, but nah, anybody, so it's, it's the end of the year. It's the end of the year. I've, I haven't talked a lot this year, so other yeah. than writing myself. So uh, what I was about to say was, I mean, if you if y'all want to send us this, make sure you refer to our episode clarifying our method. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Before yeah. sending us any myths, please. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Good. Very good. Also, I got one more shout out before we move on to the next segment of this. Um, just want to give a shout out to our home channel BPM. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Black Power Media for those who still don't know. Black Power Media, shout uh, out to you guys. Shout out to shout y'all. To, yeah. Shout out to Dr. Ball. He just got a really big award. Um, yes, Dr. Ball. Dr. Ball. Yeah, shout out Ball. Yeah, shout out Dr. Ball. Love Took the words right out of my mouth. Shout out to Dr. Ball. Yeah, he don't always get the credit he's due, you know, for whatever reasons. But like, it's just good to see him, you know, get recognized. Doing the work. As, well, as you all should know, Dr. Ball is a like a big supporter of the channel. Um, somebody we always can go to help to advice, whatever he's he's always down for us, so we appreciate him a lot. Real, yeah, real. taking a chance on four black kids who just want to um break debunk myths and talk shit. Four black kids, like he's some kind of football coach. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> he's, Bro, he's, not, he's not he's not Coach Carter and like that. But he... <laughs> like, That's okay, no, I'm like, I had making it seem like... <laughs> like he, he he discovered us out there and he brought us to college. You know, gave us he did. But uh, <laughs> Honestly, hey, uh, Dr. Ball bro. saved my life. <laughs> he saved my life. Uh, uh, shit. Bro, but nah, Kay- he's a Casey scholar, man. That's a very rare list. So, you know, shout, yeah, out, for to real, shout real. out to that. We got a nice chuckle change. I won't say it because I don't want him to get robbed, but we got a nice chuckle change. So, hey. um, now that we have given the flowers that needed to be gave, uh, let's talk about the myths. This All year. right. So this year, we um we did a little few less episodes than last year, but honestly, that's because we did that shit with the library, so we had like extra episodes last year. Um, <clears throat> but so just we're just gonna go through the list. If anyone has any quick reflections, do that, and then we'll get to we'll we'll focus on a few episodes and we'll be out of here. So at the opening of the year, uh, we did an episode. Uh, did Omicron originate in Africa? With uh, Ogandima, Kingsley, Okapu. We just call him Kings, bro, on Twitter. Uh, I didn't even know like, he was Nigerian actually until we brought him on the show. Uh, you know, but he's 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 actually like a like he's studying. He's gonna be getting his PhD, I think, like here soon. He's gonna be clearing getting his PhD. Um, but you know, so he he really talked us through me and Cameron on that episode. He really talked us through like uh, COVID. Um, the, some of the stuff that even people were saying at the time on both sides of the quote unquote conversation, whether yeah. people were pro vax or not, like he had, he just had some really good information, and he and he was able to label, um, he was able to 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 craft and frame this in a conversation that still like, had a political analysis. It wasn't just about medicine or something. He was able to explain like the way that the global south relates to the global north, and you know, and how vaccines need to be made indigenous to the country it can't just be america giving them away because a lot of people don't probably want to trust america because america and the west is fucked over these places right so he's really good at breaking that down um but initially it was about whether omicron started in africa because of the, if i remember correctly south africa was the one to actually identify the omicron strand of the covid and then people started saying that it started there and then the United States started banning travel and Europe started banning travel from these areas, you know, when 
with the evidence show it more than likely we didn't fully know, but it more than likely actually started in Africa in, um, in, in Europe, you know, so. That episode um, was just really important because it just like further showcased how um, propaganda um, against mm -hmm. the global South is constantly being perpetuated across the, the world um, as a way to showcase and to continue to put down um, the work that's happening, you know, and it's like, instead of it actually being something that should have been heralded and praised that South Africa was one of the first to be able to identify what was happening and was actively working um, to figure out what COVID was and how we could actually, you know, build up some type of um, immunity to it in a healthy manner to stop this. We were, they were wasting time and being like, oh no, this is, this is, um, this is from Asia and Africa, we're banning flights instead of actively wanting to collaborate and find out what they knew so that way we could apply it and actually save lives. Um, and I just think that episode to start off the year, especially given the fact that all four of us um, were have dealt with COVID in a variety of manners, um, that episode for me really was just something like, this needs to be discussed. Um, next was um, Ancestry DNA Test Determines Race. Uh, that was that we did part one ourselves and the part two was with Dr. Shea Kill McLean. Shout out to uh, Dr. McLean. That one was this pop up of there's been these these uh, you know people saying they're like 45 percent black uh, <laughs> because they took an ancestry test or people saying because they they got they, and, and the test don't even say that it says you're from Cameroon and people confusing the two ethnicity and race and then also showing that even the ethnic the quote unquote ethnicity that the tests are based on or based or were built off these clusters that are made up in a lab and based on whatever samples they actually have available and then based on those samples of what they find they're like okay we connected it to these samples and your dna tracks this many samples so therefore you're this percentage but even they when you read the fine print say no one is broken down into that kind of thing and dr mclean did a great job me and terrell on part two of that of demonstrating how like no one's DNA works that way. No, but you can't break people into pies. That's that's DNA period doesn't work yeah. that way. <laughs> and one of the one of the things that the test failed in is like, okay, well, these different markers that you have that identify you or show where you're supposedly from or whatever, you can find these different markers in different places everywhere. Yeah. So to say like to say like, oh, I'm such and such percent this part of africa or whatever well you know that percentage pops up or that uh that marker pops up in africa it also pops up in australia it also pops up in here mm -hmm. it may be more prevalent in this area right mm -hmm. but that still shows up in different areas like around the world but also the fact that you can't break down dna like that right it just don't work, <laughs> it just don't work. i think it's a it's weird it's like a fundamental um um miscommunication it's really just kind of uh it's kind of influenced by the way dna well, testing biology it doesn't work like that <laughs> yeah it's kind of influenced by how um dna testing is influenced again by capitalism able to sell you on the idea that yeah you can be able to break down your dna into certain percentages because they, i mean they take the fact they take advantage of the fact that you know black people here in america cut off from our culture and everything and then so they come up with this idea and sell you this whole dream of oh you can break down your dna exactly to an exact percentages and that's not true we're not giving you no reparations but we'll help you at least figure out where you're from you can book your own vacation and go right and you can pay for trying it. to figure it out we and have it's, no, it's, even, it's all exploitation at the end of the day. Not no, we will not exactly. tell you what we might actually do with your dna what we have no, that's not we even exactly. we're not yes do. also we more are, exploitation more um I'm glad Cam that. said that. I'm glad she said that because we did discuss mm -hmm. in that episode what's actually being done with your DNA when mm -hmm. you submit it. What's being done with that data? You don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in some cases, work against and, you because that was a Dorothy Roberts fatal. Dorothy Roberts wrote Fatal Invention that we use her book primarily to to debunk that, and she yeah. talks about how in some cases that's been used for facial recognition. It's been used. The police use that DNA. In some cases, even being used preemptively for people who may commit crimes, <laughs> like some of this, some of this information is used for that. And we also, I think, did a good job. We've done a few episodes. We go through it, like really showing 
the history of, of race as a construct and racism mm -hmm. how it is and really explaining because people say race is a social construct and they don't know what the fuck they're saying when they say that like we yeah. actually broke down like what that means because often it's not explained people just throw that around with no mm -hmm. real breakdown so we're not going to do that now because that's another episode but like yes. go back and listen to that if you really want to get a thorough breakdown of just like what what people mean when they say it's a quote-unquote construct but like like um <clears throat> like robert said it's it's not a social construct much it's a political construct you know like it's mm -hmm. been imposed yeah. on people, and it was a way of of of, of, of taking resources from folks it's not just social social it's implies almost, that we all agreed to it mm -hmm. um, it's almost like you can't really separate the two right in a way um and i just want to add this last thing i want to say but mm -hmm. in the episode especially the one we did together um as just a pod that we made a good line we drew a good line between racial sciences of the past and then yeah. mm -hmm. DNA testing of the present. Yeah, and, he does a good job in the book. Doing, yeah, yeah, that's a good mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, you know, we just want everybody again to beware of those DNA tests and how they're able to manipulate you and your feelings. And you know, <laughs> that's just it. Yeah, that's all I want to say. And I'm sure that one. I'm sure that one pissed a lot of people off. That one did get a, <clears throat> had an interesting amount of people in the comments on YouTube. Um, but that was a good episode altogether. Yeah, both That's of them. Doctor Doctor McLean really broke that <laughs> down some more. And 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 they they're actually a a, a bio scientist like straight up, so they know that shit in and out. Um, <clears throat> another another we talked to two scientists like opening the year. Um, so we we kind of talk about this next one. So we're not gonna talk about too much more, but we. Violence is never the answer, and we talk about My the Pendleton favorite two. episodes. Um, and we actually talk to for people who don't know the Pendleton two are the two, you know, Naeem um and Balagoon or their full names, Christopher Naeem Trotter and John Balagoon Cole. There was a, a rebellion in 1985 at the Indiana Reformatory Prison, what is now known as Pendleton, and an inmate by the name of Lincoln Love was being beat nearly to death by the um, prison guards, who we now know were part of a group that was called the Sons of Light, which was a KKK splinter group. Um, Naeem and Balagoon intervened to try to save this man's life. They did successfully, but they had to take hostages. They took over the prison for about 15 hours. They had a series of demands. No one died. And then they both got um, ridiculous sentences, 142 years for Naeem and 84 years for Balagoon. Um, you know, 20 years in the hole or in the, in the um, solitary confinement for Naeem and then uh, 32 years for in five months, um, Balagoon was like saving in five months in the solitary confinement. Um, you know, so we talked to both of them, um, like in prison, as because they're still there. Um, and we, the, so the myth was violence never the answer because we see how in this story, had they not done what they needed to do to defend themselves, you know, someone would have died, including themselves, yeah. you know, and the person they were saving. So um, we also talked to Shock Shakur in part two. Who um you know who was a net, who was part of the the prisoner movement who who got sent out to Virginia who used to be in Indiana because he had to he ended up getting in a fight with a guard who kept fucking with him um so you know Shaka Shakur is a great historian on um just the, what goes on in prison in general so so yeah that was that I think that was probably the most like impactful episode whether it was the most watched or listened to I, I don't care but it was definitely I think the most serious one we did. We still encourage you to go back and watch that episode, please. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, you know, and, and and footage from that episode is being used for other things, but yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, man, oh, uh, man. The um, the next one is uh, the <laughs> the myth was the system is broken. This Shout one episode was both fun and 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 this was a funny episode just because the way Yannick breaks stuff down. <laughs> but like, Shout Dr. Out to Dr. Dr. Yannick. Was funny. <laughs> I was yes. just talking to him yesterday. He's hilarious. But like, you know, <laughs> he had written a piece um about the the language of liberal policing. And he had how many words was it around? I don't even remember at this point. Man, oh man. Um, it was like 15 different words that he I felt like it was. Yeah, that he that he went through. Uh I'll pull it up here quick, but it was like 15 different words that he went through and just exposed like the myth in those terms to describe oh, it right here. how it takes the air out of what's really going down. And when, so he didn't write the piece to say the system, I think broken was one of the words though. 
Because yeah. the whole point of the myth was that if the system, you know, is built a certain type of way, it can't be broken. But even yeah. he goes even further than that. I think it might be 16. 16. Okay, I was close. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and he goes even further than that. You know, then not just it, it was built this way, but he was like, it's not even, it's, he's like, it's not that they stole things and they built something on top of it. He was like, it is, America is slavery. <laughs> America yeah. is colonialism. There is no separating the two. Like, it is those things. You know, I remember when he said that, I was like, yeah, I never, never thought, like most people will say they think they're being slick. It was built this way. He's like, there was not, it, there is no building on top of this shit. It just all is, this, it all is those things. <laughs> I love um, the way he just gets straight to the point. Yeah, he's, he's, okay. he just, he's a straight shooter, and you're just sitting there, and it's just like, <laughs> you know, and it makes you feel like, and it, and it's not in a in a notion that ever makes that that is condescending or anything, but like mm -hmm. he just says shit in a way that you're just like, why the fuck didn't I know that? Like, yeah, why, didn't, why didn't I say it that? Why way? didn't it click for me? <laughs> yeah. like, why 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 is it never? You're like, damn. Okay. It's like it's not at least really no room for interpretation. He says what he means. He means what he says, and he says when he says, "Hey, America is irreconcilable." You know, it can't. This system can't be reformed. He means that. <laughs> that's that's what it is. <laughs> that's just what it is. That's what it is. Like, hey, there's he's no. Like, Ameri he's like, talking about right? the American dream. Right. He's like, America does not deserve to dream. I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> like, okay. No, he said he's he talking about America, putting that on um, things on T-shirts, but like. He said, he said America is the dream of the slave master. Like, that was yeah, like, yeah. Bro, we got to get shirts made. You don't deserve, you don't deserve <laughs> We talk shit about shirts all the time, but truly, I like, you know. America is the dream of the slave. Like, I just want to read some of his words. Also, just very poetic. Like, so I don't know. Let me pick a term. Broken, since that's the myth. Broken imagines that the past of an institution as being whole. The justice system is broken, suggests that there was a time other than the time of discriminatory juries, disparate racial sentencing, courts overruled by mobs, prison plantation labor, mass imprisonment, or rush executions. It adds to make the justice system great again, referring to a time when the justice system was great, but also a time that cannot be named as to name any hour when it was whole would be an admission of one callous indifference to anti-Black violence in the hour selected. Broken implies a possible fix. But no wow. bandaging will make the inventions of white supremacist control rehabilitating in a society that remains. And who is founding logic is white supremacists. Black people have broken their systems of enslavement with uprising and survival. Its repair, its wholeness, will be the perfection of racist repression. Repeating the phrase, the system is broken or the system fails Black people, has proven to be the best way to block against the criticism that the system is pre precisely that device which makes grand scale repression and injustice possible, not the malfunctioning of a better one. <laughs> like just like I don't have like I don't have words, y'all. Yeah. And y'all, <laughs> as y'all know, if you listen to the show, you know, like we um it's not always that the four of us are on the same episode and I wasn't there for that interview. And so, but that doesn't mean that we also don't still listen and and do the research. And I just was like, <laughs> I had to take my headphones. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what? And I want our listeners really, to know that people really fuck with that one though, because like that's yeah. the one. That's the one I'm sending. If I if I if you ain't really into this shit, I'm gonna send you that one. Because yeah. that one, I agree. You get into you know what I'm saying. Like, and I want our listeners to know that the way he writes is exactly the way he talks. Yeah. <laughs> There's no. <laughs> yeah. No distinction. Up. Yeah. Clip just be loaded, and he'd be like, "Yeah, sure, y'all want me to unload." All right, mm -hmm. you asked for it. Right don't, 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 don't listen to it while you're at work or something. Yeah, or if you are, you better keep your headphones in. Do not play that in your little pool. Yeah. You know. <laughs> you, or, I mean, depending on the person you are, you might get depressed. Cool. Or a person like me, you might just be like, I, I, I feel I validated. I feel validated. That's the type of shit I'd send to my brother. Like any, like I said, anybody could listen to that shit. Because you'd be like, damn, this nigga's spitting. If nothing, less, if nothing more, mm -hmm. you'd be like, damn, he's spitting. You know, because he just be going in. Um, next was rooting for everybody black being the myth. I love beating up on this one because I can <laughs> say that shit. Uh, so, that was with Ofemi Taiwo. That was really an extension of a conversation we'd already had before he published his book, Elite Capture. Um, this was to talk about Elite Capture, the book, but we had talked to him in the beginning of 2021 on the myth of trickle down blackness. 
So rooting for everybody black was a way basically of extending that conversation, but going through the language that people use since we were kind of on a language tip since we did it with Yannick. Um, <clears throat> Cause like, I, and I just remember asking directly, do you, do you root for everybody black? He was just like, no, and he's no. like, nobody does, you know? So it's like, and you shouldn't No. I mean, even just thinking about Georgia, like what the fuck? No, nothing in me is rooting for Herschel Walker, and I wasn't really rooting for Warnock either. Yeah, I wouldn't go say no There's no way in hell that we need it. Like, <laughs> I just don't even understand how he got a single vote. Like, y'all niggas was really out here voting. Hey, for white Herschel. white people will they they make everything like that. They will. They I don't. Mean, we know that white people will do whatever. I don't think that many niggas voted for him because every other Republican in that state won. Other than him, other than him, because that's how bad it was. But yeah, I mean, really, I mean, what, that, really what that episode was getting at was like the class politics that that mm-hmm. exists with amongst black yeah. folks with, throughout the diaspora. So, and how like elite capture this idea that the and this is really what kind of helped me write even laundry and black rage, but this idea that you know the elites of a group capture the resources of the least in the group. So when black people uh, go out and protest, you know, the, the most uppity niggas get jobs, you know, <laughs> like, so it's just like, did that, that's kind of how I, it helped me get to like laundering black rage, even though there's some distinctions there, but elite capture, that's a great book. And it's a quick read. I would advise yeah. anybody to cop that book. Uh, you know I just gotta know that if black says quick read, it's, um, not a quick read for the rest of not y'all, but it's not that. It's, it's, a, like, it's a it's a worthy read. It's 140, 150 pages. Like if y'all can't read that, that he could read in like thirty minutes. But <laughs> it could take you a good solid week if you're dedicating thirty minutes a day as you should to reading. But bro, you know what it reminds me of? Almost um, remember the black car video we did? Mm. Oh wow, I'm taking it back. Yeah, you take it yeah this was. And we might do, we might need to do a myth on the black card. Yeah, maybe, 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 yeah. but it's kind of one of those things where, like, you know, what is a black card? Because they were giving it to this man, like, he was for us, and I'm like, uh, I don't, nah, the Warnock, I yeah, uh, I'm sorry, what you talking about, Warnock, yeah, talking about Walker, no, no, her, uh, Walker, 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 yeah, well, know. honestly, yeah. any black possible, yeah, any, but I mean, you it, mm-hmm. it goes beyond that because you look at like Kanye, yeah, who's yeah. no interest in spending much time on this. Uh, but, but I'm just oh, sorry, I just got it. triggered for a second. I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> so, you see me just keeping my head down. I'm gonna make this very brief because I don't want to talk about that. Moment. But please I'm saying, do. like, please Kanye, do. where the loyalty of trying to see, oh, this is a black man get tore down, and we're like that, just re just viewing things solely through the prism of race when someone's a billionaire and they have all these resources and thinking that that is you because what happened to Kanye can happen to you. These are like we talked about in the profiting off of black death episode these are not our problems but the way the laundering makes it work like that is our problem but anyway yeah. plus he's a that. plus he's a fucking idiot yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you like i mean like, that's it that's, yeah so um that's what we were saying we're like these type of myths are not worthy of, de- of debunking if y'all can't get that right we there's really nothing we can say to you if y'all are like Nazis, like there's not. I'm not spending any time on that. Like that's at all, at all. Again, yeah. refer to our episode clarifying yeah. our method, please. Yeah. Um. Next was uh revisited. We don't really have to talk about this. This is episode 2021, but I think we took this month off. So what's Africa got to do with me? Still a good episode. Um, thoroughly researched episode. Shout out to Walter Rodney. Rest in peace, Walter Rodney. Um. How Europe de- underdeveloped Africa was was the primary source for this one, um, and really just helped. Like when folks say, "Well, I what Africa got to do with me? I'm from I'm from um, Nap or what you know." Like when people say shit like that, it's like, "Well, here's materially the ways you're connected to Africa, not just culturally or like you know you just have a nose like someone on the West Coast. No, you the actual resources there are connected to you, and 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 that process is still ongoing." Mm-hmm. Um, um, the one um, next was a myth, the myth of African wildlife conservation. We're going to talk more oh. about this. So we're going to talk about it later. Yeah, okay. um, but with, that was so, with Doc, Dr. Okay. Abby Sin. That was a that was a sleeper episode. Um, but that was about African wildlife conservation. Not that it in and of itself is a myth, but the way it's practiced uh, <laughs> is really just you know colonialism. Uh, <laughs> but but the wow. but they sell you think of your you know whether you're talking about pandas or some shit that you're gonna 
change the world. Um, and really, they're just stealing land and, you know, killing Africans. So uh, next was, uh, we're going to talk about this later, too. These, really, these next three or these these last three are going to be the ones we're going to talk about primarily. Crack Baby, um, we only had a part one on that, so that was extra long on purpose because we didn't have a part two. Um, but that, I think, was one, there's no such thing as a Crack Baby. That was the myth, you know, and we really got in some deeper history on, like, how I to think about that beyond just the specific myth. I got to give a shout out to somebody. No, I'm giving a shout. Out. I'm giving a shout out to Cam because in like the first of, of that video, go back and watch it within like the first 30 minutes of it, because it was like what two hours long. Cam broke it down as far as the media's play into it, um, the propaganda of it, and she broke it down like just ah. Uh, well, thanks. I really thought you was about to call me a crack baby, and I was about to cuss you. <laughs> No, 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 like, yo, yeah, like, you gotta, you're teeing it up to, to insult no, me. No, no, like, like I'm pretty sure my mom was drunk when I was conceived. She did not do crack. Thank you very much. <laughs> As we proved no, that way, the way she broke it down, it like it summed up the whole episode for me right there. And granted, we still, you know, had like an hour worth of talk talking and everything, but just her segment that she did that first 30 minutes, go back and watch it. Yeah, you'll see what I'm talking about. That was yeah. a good episode. Yeah, man. that was yeah. probably my favorite. Um, that episode meant a lot to me for a lot of yeah. reasons. That was a good. That was a good episode because like we really I mean, went. We, we, gonna, we we get to talk about it later. So, yeah. oh, okay, my bad, my bad. <laughs> uh, um, um, next was the uh was the myth Marxism is Eurocentric. Uh, we did a part one and two. I think we spent the most time on that. That was a collective almost four hours of of, uh, <laughs> of time between the two episodes. <laughs> but like that one was fun. And I think we'll talk about this more later as well. But like that one, I don't think uh, and some people would have saw that one coming at one point in time. And I think that that was an interesting spin. I think that I think I don't want to brag necessarily, but I think we made that more un easy to understand than anything I'd heard in a while. Um, Cause I know a lot of people are intimidated by just the idea of Marxism, not even the Eurocentric part, which is its own yeah. thing, but they're just intimidated by all the different, you know, like the, I don't even really know what exactly it is. I just know that it, I think it, people feel like it's dense and it's hard to comprehend. And it's a we lot. We made it easier than the research we had to do for it. <laughs> wow. But I think I once, like the, what it's, was one a, those, it's one of those things that once you clear the hurdle, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's like this is easy. Like this makes perfect. Yeah, can and we shout out the two podcast the, the podcast that we listen to? Rev Left. Or, what is shout it? Out to them. Rev Left. Rev Left. Yeah. Rev Left. Rev, Rev Left. Shout out to y'all. Rev Left yeah. Radio. Yeah. They um uh, they but did. To your, to they your did point, it. Black. You know, I feel like. That's just learning period. Once you get over the hump of all the research and then collecting the ideas and organizing ideas, it it gets much easier. So yeah, I'm proud of that episode. I'm proud of a lot of these episodes. Yeah. Um and then we did talking about them gives me like little warm fuzzies. Cause I'm just like, yo, mm -hmm. as you know, outside of the pod, we all have like work and life be life in. And so yeah. it's easy to forget how much like we put into this and how much we've learned in the process. I'm like, just thinking about some of the episodes we, we did. Um, I'm just like, some of this was things that for me was really the first time that I was taking a deep dive into it. Right. Like I too might've known something that um, was just either popular opinion or skewed or just things that I had learned in passing, but like really thinking mm -hmm. through all the stuff that we dove into this year, I'm just like, damn. Yeah. Part two of that episode or that of that myth we talked to um dr sharice burgess staley who's been on the show a few times now and then uh, mm -hmm. dr jody okay. dean um they had they released a book uh, organized fight when black communist women's um political writings so i thought that was that was that was like if you had any issue with part one like you were there was nothing you could say after part two because it was like yeah. we literally had a whole book of just black communist women in America who were like the founders of the communist party and were who were clear theorists and organizers so if you had if you wanted to claim it was eurocentric with marx or whatever even though we made a clear distinction that marxism 
it's not just about Karl Marx. We made that distinction. Like, you know, that for me, I think that put it to bed because it was like, here's some real people who did it, you yeah. know, from 19, I think it was from 1919 to 1956. The book covers those writings. So it's, it's like an anthology of those writings. So check that book out. That book's doing pretty well um, from what I heard as far as selling. So um, after that, was, we'll, we'll come back to the Marxism thing. But after that was um, profiting off of Black Death. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't look at the I didn't look at the reactions on that, um, but I'm hoping it hurt a lot of people's feelings the way it should have. So yeah, there was um, profiting profit the myth profiting off of Black Death that was based on my essay uh, laundering Black Rage, which I'm trying to expand into other projects um, as we speak. The that was as we said at the time a partial myth. It's not that people don't profit off of Black Death. It's that Black people get killed every day. And the stuff that people often say is profiting off of Black death is a surplus, which usually comes with some other force behind it. So as I say with Black rage, it's when Black people go to the streets, when Black people get angry, that all of a sudden book deals start getting passed out. People start getting new jobs. You know, foundation money starts coming in. Because if it was just about when Black people get killed, then, you know, we, we ran through the numbers, how many Black people get killed by the police, how many black people die from di different health difficulties? You know, how many black people die from various things? And we don't see any like, we're, we're putting a grant into the black community because like you don't see that until we actually take it to the streets. Then, you know, all that comes out and we showed out in 2020, that was very clear. Um, you know, the amount of money that that popped up prior and how much money the Democratic Party raised off of, off of um, the George Floyd you know, murder and so on and so forth. Um, so yeah, that was, that episode was weird for me because it was like something I wrote. So it was kind of just weird if I'm being honest, <laughs> but like, but, but yeah, we got through it. And then the last episode, um, Haiti needs, or the myth, Haiti needs more foreign intervention with Dr. Jamima Pierre. That one, uh, you know, I was, I was the only one on that one as far as the interviewer, but I learned a lot. Even though I researched for it, I learned a lot because she's just like a encyclopedia on anything Haiti. Like she can just, you know, just go. Uh, but the ultimate thing was really showing like part one really broke down like the history that preceded where Haiti is today and how it's already been invaded and how that's fucked over the country. You know, how Corolla was brought to the country, how money was stolen from the country, how the UN brought troops in that sexually assaulted children you know how Aristide, Gene Aristide was over, was a, there was a coup that America supported against him in 2004, and really, and in, 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 in really twice. Uh, you know, there was the occupation of Haiti from 1915, 1934 with uh, that the United States engaged in. There's forcing Haiti to pay reparations, um, you know, to, to the French. Uh, so we went through all of that and much more. And then in part two, she really just discusses like what the situation is in Haiti and how intervention it's not something anybody there wants. <laughs> like the exactly. people have had enough of that. And she was, you know, and that's not something that folks want. So we should oppose it since we live here. I know everybody likes to talk about other people's countries. Um, but exactly. since you live here, for those who are in America listening to this, you should probably deal with your own government and leave like China or whatever else alone. Uh, mm -hmm. So, exactly. you know, the UN wants to, the UN has been pushing mm -hmm. to, you know, bring some kind of invasion or intervention into Haiti. And that is the ongoing situation that's still happening. And then even in um, the Dominican Republic, they're like basically just swooping up Haitians, you know, and or if even you look like you're from Haiti. Right. If you're just a dark skin. Yeah. Dominican, you know, you're getting yeah. swooped up. So I talked about, I put a little blurb about that in part two of that episode. And again, this is an ongoing because this is a, the most recent episode. So you know, I would say join Black Alliance for Peace because we do a lot of good work on this. I will also say for that episode, it was dope being able to just know that my organization did a lot of the work as far as the research. So I didn't have to dig these things out of the crate so much as some of the other episodes. Um, but yeah, uh, shout out Dr. Jamima for sure. Um, and I think she's working on a book as well. Um, so yeah, that's the year. We're gonna I'm glad you made... I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was okay. glad, I'm glad that episode was recorded because... Right when all the you know we're talking about intervention was happening in Haiti, I remember my um my father coming to me and talking about that, and he said, "Oh, I guess U.S. is going to go start going in Haiti." I was like, "Oh, it's going to make things worse," and I guess he kind of disagreed with me. But um, 
I just want to say I'm just glad that the episode is recorded so we can understand why intervention in Haiti or more intervention in Haiti has not helped. No, no. Nah. And it's this idea that Haiti is, you know, these backwards folks who are violent. And that's a stereotype and they need to be Thank you. saved. Mm -hmm. But it's like the reason that that place is in the peril that it's in is because of all the foreign intervention because they've only had one democratically elected president the entire time of existence of the country, because the United States is back dictators, you know, that's, that's Thank why you. in the rest of the world, um, you know, she talked about how even Brazil assisted in the occupation of Haiti. So it's like, those things don't need to happen any further. You know, there should be, if anything, we should, it should be about helping them set up what they already got going or just let them figure it out. Uh, but even the thing about the gangs, because the myth was almost going to be about the gangs, and I think I squished it last minute, the whole, like, gangs have taken over, and she talked about how, like, the the barbecue gangster that, that the media talks about in Haiti wasn't, um, he walked away and left and let the country get access to the fuel, and then America reports that they had forced them off and it, they had nothing to do with that. They, that the police had forced them to do it. So it's like the, the media awesome. be lying. And if you really think the media lies about like domestic shit, internationally, they just be lying. Like it's worse. Oh <laughs> so, yeah. Even like, go back, just even, even on us on a little scale, go back to what we were talking about in regards to COVID, but like the, the amount of lies when it comes to international relations is ridiculous. And when it comes to Haiti, like I just am infuriated. Um, on a daily basis by what's happening in, in Haiti and what has continued to happen for decades. And so, you know, for sake of brevity, like I'm going to keep quiet on this for right now. Um, but if folks want to like shoot the shit about Haiti, by all means, I love, I mean, I don't love it because it's infuriating, but it is a conversation that continuously needs to be had. Um, and something Peace. that I no, ask please. somebody with quite a bit of friends Um who are Haitian, who have family back in Haiti still, uh, mm -hmm. enjoy to continuously discuss and learn about and learn from others. So yeah, this is the one time I invite y'all into my DMs. Yes. No, because that, that's real shit, because Haiti has been through a lot, and hell. It's, it's, it, yeah, they've been through hell just because... And it's like, the more I learn, like, the more I just... Yeah. 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 And it's so, just other, other countries getting in their business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to... Black's point about the media. Just because CNN and MSNBC are juxtaposed with Fox News doesn't mean that they tell the truth. Yeah. Oh, also, the Come on. Ooh. Yeah, hey, I mean, there's so much. Bro, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Say that one more time. <laughs> oh, just because CNN and MSNBC are staying in juxtaposition to Fox News does not mean they tell the truth. Okay. <laughs> no, nah, none of these motherfuckers. Like, yeah, when it comes to the international thing, like, I don't, we could, I don't, again, to keep it brief, won't get into a lot of stuff, but even with the Ukraine-Russia war, like, these motherfuckers be lying, like, you're giving money to Nazis and you're trying to, like, prop that up, like, that's not what you're doing. I'm not saying all of Ukraine is Nazis, just before someone tries to run with that, but there is a decent portion of Nazis integrated into that government, this is a fact. Yeah. So, so, you know, the fact that that, the military, not just the government, uh, so, the fact that you're doing that and you want to act like and you and don't want to talk about the way the U.S. has contributed to that situation like that's all just one sided, you know, so I'm just saying we'll probably continue to do war on international issues. But those are always the most infuriating for me to close it out just because the lies are just so like bold, like, you know, in, in the inside the U.S. usually it's a it's a misinterpretation or, you know, the cops lie, but. The shit they be talking about in other countries, they don't even be close. Like it's like, bro, that's like why once you investigate, it's like why should they want to even believe this shit? So anyway, um, I yeah, shout out. I'm sorry. I do want to shout out that we um we had a goal between last year and this year of doing more international stuff, and I think we accomplished that and we've done a pretty good job on um not just handling the domestic issues here at home, but like bringing it on an international scale. Yeah, yeah I'm even happy about we're talking that. about stuff that would technically be domestic, like Crack Baby, I think, which we're about to talk about. Um, you know, we were able to connect that to broader, exactly, because broader, yeah, broader trends beyond just like, you know, that that subject. Um, 
All right. So that's the episode. Uh, like I said at the beginning, uh, there will be a an extended conversation where we go more in depth about the myths um, from from 2022 that we've covered. Uh, so we're going to do like a kind of like a fake awards to our show. So it'll be about um, like the most slept on episode or the most well researched episode or our most popular episode. And we're going to talk more in depth about those episodes and our reflections on those episodes. So, you know, if you're a big fan of the show or you just, or just, you're just interested, you know, you can go to the Patreon and you can hear that extended conversation. Otherwise, uh, we appreciate everyone um, who's been with us throughout the year, or if you became a listener at some time during the year, either way, or even prior to that, we definitely appreciate you. And, um, you know, we're going to move forward in 2023 and we're going to keep it moving. Uh, so uh, thank you. Peace out. Uh, okay. Fresh out the plane in a whole nother state. I'm trying to eat down a whole nother plate. Seems like my homies were stuck in the hood. I just told them be safe in the state.